Agora TV. The world is thinking. And this is a fairly historic photograph, uh, not just because of the long sideburns, but <laughs> because it was when we were first beginning to assemble this skeleton in the desert, piece by piece would come in uh, during the excavations and the screening. And we began to see an individual put together. It wasn't just, oh, here's a nice chunk of skull, or here's a mandible, or here's a leg bone. We could see that there were parts of a lower limb. There was a thigh bone, and a tibia, and an ankle, and a knee, and a hip socket. And most importantly, um, the tailbone and the left hip bone that gave us a good look at the pelvis. There were parts of the vertebral column or backbone, ribs, bit of a clavicle, uh, even an area where the uh, shoulder is articulated, uh, a nearly complete lower jaw, and just fragments of a skull. And we knew that it was three million years old. We now know that it was 3.2 million years old when she came to the edge of the lake and died for some reason. Maybe pulled in by a crocodile, we don't know. There's one little puncture mark in her pelvis that was probably made at about the time of death. And because of her diminutive size, the length of that thigh bone right there, just look down at yours from the hip to your knee, most of yours are about that long, hers was 12 inches, 280 millimeters, and the question in reconstructing stature, she was only about a meter or about three and a half feet tall. So the question was, was it a child? Well, we had the lower jaw, we had the complete uh, molar sequence. Well, you know, our, your first molar comes in at age six, then 12 is the second molar, and at 18, your third molar, and that's pretty much when you biologically stop developing. So we knew that this was an adult, and we think she was more like 11 or 12 years old when she died. The work is, work is suggesting that their maturation rates were much faster than ours, more ape-like than our, uh, our, our extended uh, maturation rate that we have in modern Homo sapiens. So we knew she was an adult. And from the diminutive size of the bones, the small size of the canine socket, her small stature, we thought that this was a female. And uh, I had a girlfriend on the expedition. People always want to know where her name came from, and uh, whose name was Pamela. And we were listening to a Beatles record it wasn't a record, it was a little tape recorder, a little Sony tape recorder, and she said, well, if you think this is a female, why don't you call her Lucy after Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? And I thought, gosh, you know, I just got my PhD at the University of Chicago. I'm a professor or a doctor, you know. We have to have some very sophisticated name. She got that name, Australopithecus afarensis, named after the Afar people in the Afar region. But there was no turning back. Uh, the next morning at breakfast, oh, do you think we'll find more of Lucy's jaw? Do you think, how old do you think Lucy was when she died? How big do you think Lucy's brain was? And it, it was so interesting because it was pure serendipity that this happened. And it, it was, it was uh, I guess, a wonderful thing to have happened because she has become so well known as an individual. It's sort of an affectionate, easy, usable name, uh, Lucy and uh, people identify with her. And just as Zarai said, when new discoveries are made, they're older than or younger than Lucy or more complete than Lucy or taller than Lucy or whatever.